Uh, welcome to the Atlantic Council's Global Trends 2030 conference, co-hosted with the United States National Intelligence Council. Um, I'm also happy to have uh, uh, Tom Enders here, uh, EADS CEO, a member of our International Advisory Board and co-chair of our Strategic Advisors Group. Uh, over the next day and a half, some of the world's leading experts on technology, defense, strategy, urbanization, foreign policy, just about anything else you can think of, uh, are going to be here to discuss and debate uh, future trends with all of you and how they'll shape the world out to 2030 envisioned in the scenarios of the NICS excellent report, Global Trends 2030 Alternative Worlds. Uh, this conference is a marquee event of the Atlantic Council's new uh, Brent Scowcroft Center on Inter International Security. Now, it's not totally accurate to call it new. Uh, it was formally launched in September, but it really goes, grows out of our international uh, uh, security program, which is decades old, uh, and it is a significant deepening and expansion of that program's work uh, and will now be known as the Brent Scowcroft Center on International Security. One of the most important new initiatives in this center is our Strategic Foresight Initiative, which is responsible uh, not only uh, for our side of the conference in the next two days, but also for an accompanying report that we have written uh, called Envisioning 2030 U.S. Leadership in a Post-Western World. Uh, the aim of the Strategic Foresight Initiative is much of what we're doing today, bringing together experts from the United States, our traditional allied countries, uh, our close global friends, and emerging countries in the private sector, government, and civil society to jointly address trends shaping our world and the impact they will have on the global future. Uh, the Council's work on global trends and our partnership with the, United, uh, with the uh, National Intelligence Council, however, is not a new one. This one goes back to 2006 when the Council first helped facilitate the global input for the NICS Global Trends 2025 report, which was released in 2008 after the election of President Obama. Since then, we've continued our work with the NIC to inform the work of this report, and it will be briefed uh, today by its principal author and intellectual architect, uh, Dr. Matthew Burroughs, Counselor of the National Intelligence Council, after some uh, uh, initial comments, strategic comments, from Senator Hagel. After Senator Hagel's comments, please all stay in your seats because we'll go directly uh, to Matt and that panel afterwards. Uh, we have worked closely uh, with the NIC by uh, hosting various workshops and experts on technology, urbanization, uh, other emerging trends. We've traveled uh, from Botswana to Mumbai, uh, from Stockholm to Silicon Valley, and many stops in between to receive uh, input and feedback on the NICS scenarios uh, looking out to two, 2030. In addition to allowing the Atlantic Council the privilege of associating with some of the most uh, brilliant minds in, in the world, this work has also been consistent with an important aim of the Council and that's to bring perspectives of allies and partners to U.S. strategic analysis so that we can solve emerging challenges together. I think that's one of the most important things about this project, because if we think together strategically, we're more uh, likely to act better cooperatively and collaboratively when it comes to a moment of, of, of uh, crisis. Uh, I'm deeply grateful for the efforts of the chairman of the National Intelligence Council, Christopher Kojim, and Matt Burroughs uh, for the uh, cooperation with the Council and for their support of our Strategic Foresight Initiative and this conference. Uh, their leadership is important not only in establishing today's conference, but also in building a global community and practice of strategic foresight and, and analysis. And indeed, the five reports of the NIC have inspired something of a global industry of, 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 glo uh, of the, this sort of analysis and trendology. Uh, today's conference would also not be possible without our partners. So my thanks in particular go to EADS, our strategic partner, to McKinsey, our knowledge partner, to our supporters, uh, uh, Boeing and the Honorable Robert Gelbard, and to our media partner, the Scientific American. 
Uh, finally, as a veteran, a long veteran of the Wall Street Journal, I'm delighted that we're holding uh, this special event here at the museum. Uh, and I want to thank all those from the museum for uh, giving us this wonderful location. Um, if you do visit the museum, you'll see that there are big pieces of Berlin Wall here and, uh, and some guard towers. And I say that not to promote anyone's book. Uh, I, I, I say it really uh, for you to reflect on 1961, the building of the wall, 1989, the coming down of the wall as dramatic expressions of how U.S. leadership can bring about different results uh, at moments of historic inflection. It is now my privilege to turn the floor over to Chris Kojim, Chairman of the National Intelligence Council. Well, thanks, Fred, and I uh, want to express deep appreciation to you, Fred, personally, and to the Atlantic Council for holding this event to help launch the National Intelligence Council's quadrennial report, Global Trends 2030. The NICS Global Trends Project is a collaborative effort. We could not have accomplished it without the help of our partners outside government. Our partnership with the Atlantic Council as Fred has noted, goes back to 2006 when we first took an earlier addition to audiences overseas. Since that time, we have gone from visiting five or so countries to almost 20, and Fred partially enumerated them here. Uh, almost 20 uh, countries have, uh, we've engaged in intense dialogue, uh, and they have helped uh, us in the preparation of the volume before you. And most of those visits were arranged with the help of the Atlantic Council. I also know that many of you in the audience have helped us with the current or past volumes, <clears throat> and I thank you. You'll note that each time we produce a new edition, the acknowledgement list grows longer. For Global Trends 2030, we had a hard time fitting the list of those who helped us on three densely packed pages. Uh, that's just an indication of not only those who have helped us, but the community uh, that we have helped build that has expressed intense interest uh, in this effort. Let me say a few words about the importance of uh, the current juncture in history. As we say in the Global Trends Report, the present recalls past transition points, 1815, 1919, 1945, 1989, Berlin Wall, when the path forward was not clear cut and the world faced the possibility of different futures. However great the rate of change has been over the past couple decades, that rate of change will only accelerate in the future. It is important that we understand current and future global landscapes. Um, as we took our first draft of Global Trends 2030 around to groups here and abroad, some questioned why we held out the possibility for a bright future. Many audiences, especially in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis uh, seem to have turned very pessimistic. And we do not deny in this volume that there are genuine dangers and genuine threats which could derail the global progress that we have seen over the past three decades. However, equally, we believe through a better and shared understanding of underlying trends and possible discontinuities that we can master these challenges confronting the global community now and over the next 15, 20 years. The conference which the Atlantic Council has put together today delves into the major themes of Global Trends 2030. Emerging technologies, the US role, the changing relationship between the individual and the state, the nature of warfare, and growing urbanization. These constitute key trends which are radically transforming our world. We need to understand how they interact with each other and what changes they will bring to the larger global landscape. One of our key goals with this report is to stimulate discussion about these challenges. So I am delighted uh, after our press rollout this morning that we immediately segue to a conference that picks up these themes. I can speak with certainty that policymakers are interested in these trends and their future trajectories. These discussions here can further help to inform them. We produce the Global Trends volumes only every fourth year, but our hope is that the dialogue will be ongoing. 
And before I step down from the dais here, let me just alert you to our efforts to make Global Trends 2030 more accessible. Our website includes not only the text, but links to additional material which we found useful. We have also published the work in an ebook format so readers can download it for their use on a tablet. During the course of producing the work, we used a blog to pull in expertise from outside, and we will soon resume the blog to continue the discussion on key issues.